So let's look at a couple of examples. So first let's calculate a price index. So the price index we know is uh, the price, uh, the current price divided by the base year price times 100. And so if we look at our problem, it says that the following table shows price of a specific stereo receiver for a five year period. And the key here is to say base year is year three. So what that tells us is that year three is the base year that we'll use for a price index, which corresponds to here. So if we wanted to calculate the price index for year one, so our year one would equal to 88, which is the current price, divided by the price of the base year, which is 120, multiplied by 100. And then this equals 73. So in year one, we've got a price index of 73. So now let's look at year two. So year two is going to equal 100, which is the current price, divided by the base price, which is 120, multiplied by 100. And now this one equals 83. So then we can go ahead and fill in that 83. Now year three, which is the base year, is going to be 120 divided by 120 times 100. So the base year index is always 100. And then if we follow through the same math, so if we look at year four, so it's going to equal to 132 divided by 120 times 100. And if we multiply this out, this equals 110. And then again, following that same formula, we'd find out that in year five, that the price index is 117. And so that gives us a price index for each of the years for this stereo receiver. Now let's, let's look at a real GDP calculation problem. So we know that real GDP equals nominal GDP divided by the price index multiplied by 100. So they've given us a table here. So they've got uh, six years of data. They've got the nominal GDP, which is in this table, and then they've given us a price index. So in order to go ahead and calculate the real GDP, we just plug these into the formula. So let's look at year one. So we would have nominal GDP, which is 117, divided by the price index, which is 120, multiplied by 100. And when you calculate this out, this equals to 98. So our real GDP in year one then is $98. Now in year two, so if we were to look at year two, it would equal nominal GDP, which is 124, divided by the price index in year two, which is 104, multiplied by 100. And in this case, it ends up equaling 119. So now year two, we've got $119 is real GDP. So continuing along year three, is going to equal to nominal GDP, which is 143, divided by the price level. In this case, the price level is less than 100, it's 85. So multiplied by 100. And so in year three, our GDP is 168. And so we'd fill in 168 here. Now, we can go on using the same formula, and so the next year, the uh, real GDP is 155, and then in the next year it's 159, and then in the last year it's 154. And again, each of these years we're taking the nominal GDP, dividing it by the price index, multiplying it by 100. Now the question asks us whether we have inflated or deflated nominal GDP in finding real GDP. So in other words, did they have to increase this or decrease this in order to calculate the real GDP? So really, this is a function of, did we divide it by a number that was bigger than 100 or divide it by a number that was smaller than 100? So in this case, we divided it by a number that was larger than 100. So we, we deflated nominal GDP in order to calculate real GDP. And again, in this instance as well, we deflated nominal GDP from 124 to 119 in order to create real GDP, so it was deflated. Now in the next two cases, you can see that real GDP is bigger than nominal GDP. That's because we divided it by a price index less than 100. So each in these cases, we inflated 
nominal GDP in order to calculate real GDP. And then in the last two cases, we deflated it again. So there you have it, calculating nominal, uh, calculating real GDP from nominal GDP, and then indicating whether we inflated it or deflated it.